grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you on this time of virtual worship. Uh, it is a blessing to have you join us today. And our prayer here at the parish is that uh, this time will be a blessing for you also. Uh, today we are in the sanctuary of Mount Olivet United Methodist Church, one of three churches on the Monacan Trail Cooperative Parish. Today is the 12th Sunday following Pentecost, and it is the ninth Sunday of our Action Message series, uh, where we strive each week to connect the ancient church to the church of more recent times and then connect that to our lives today. How can we be informed uh, as we live out our Christian lives today uh, by those who lived out their lives uh, previously? Uh, the word for today is direction, direction. Oftentimes we are in search of direction. Sometimes we give directions. And so I want you to hold that word in your heart today uh, as you uh, hear the words and music that we have for you today. Uh, I invite you now to join me in unison with our opening prayer. Uh, the words will be on the screen. I invite you to uh, repeat those words with me uh, aloud. So let us pray. God, our guide, in this time together, open our eyes, our hearts, and our very beings to see, hear, and feel how you are the beacon for our journey. May the time we spend listening for your still, small voice awaken an awareness of how we can put love into action, how we can care for all our relationships. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. So our first uh, lesson from the Bible this morning is from the book of Psalms. And I will be reading for you from uh, the 32nd Psalm. And I'll be reading verses 8 through 10. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to join our studio singers uh, for this week uh, as they sing for you and for you to join in. Uh, I will follow you. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move.
Amen. And we give thanks to God's gift of music in our lives. And we also give thanks to God's gift of the scriptures, of, uh, of the apostles. And so today our reading from Acts, as we continue our action series, uh, will be from Acts chapter 16, verses 6 through 10. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When it came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. May God bless to your hearts the reading of God's word. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks for this time to gather, this, this time to consider and ponder these words that you have given us today. Uh, we pray as we explore these words, as we uh, explore the, the actions of the uh, early apostles, that it might inform us, that it would be your words uh, which are spoken here today and not my own. We ask this in your name. Amen. So uh, this past Monday, Monday of this week, I left our home in Rockersville at, uh, I think it was about 7.45 in the morning. Uh, and I began traveling west on Route 33. It's a journey that I have taken every month since the year 2016. It's a journey to Harrisonburg, but more specifically to Eastern Mennonite Seminary. I travel there for a meeting with my spiritual director, who happens to also be the campus pastor of the seminary. I am an alumnus of Eastern Mennonite Seminary, and Kevin is also a professor at the seminary besides being the pastor, uh, and he teaches courses on spiritual formation. Some of you may have heard me say that this uh, monthly journey is my most valuable hour of the month. The journey itself, though, is also part of the experience. From Greene County, past Elkton, past McAggiesville, Massanutten, it's a pleasant and beautiful drive. And it's perfect uh, to give me time to settle my heart and mind and to ponder those uh, things that I anticipate uh, Kevin and I talking about. And of course, it's uh, also a time uh, during the travel for me to review mentally uh, joys and concerns that I will want to share with my spiritual director. Now, in 2019, the parish came together, and now for those monthly trips to Eastern Mennonite, I usually embark from the parsonage at Batesville. The first time I made that journey, I, I called up my GPS app on my phone. I, I put in the address of the seminary and waited for it to compute options for the journey. And I guess I wasn't too surprised when the the GPS app directed me to get onto Interstate 64 to travel on it over to Stanton, where then it wanted me to take 81 North up to Harrisonburg. 
But that does not fit well with my expectations of a time of settling, a time of pondering and discernment and thinking to myself on the journey. It was not the journey experience that I wanted or that I had grown accustomed to uh, in the travel over Route 33. So I encouraged the GPS uh, app to give me a more scenic route, something less crazy. And, and so today, now, my route looks like taking 250 over the mountain, down through the town of Waynesboro, uh, 340 north from there. And then near Grottis, Virginia, I turn and take a northwesterly route from there over to Harrisonburg. Even today, having made that trip a number of times, I still engage my GPS app uh, because I actually find it kind of uh, enjoying to hear a random voice once in a while along the way. And it does help keep me on track because as I ponder those things that Kevin and I may be talking about, it's easy for me to distract myself and miss a turn. Now, I don't need the GPS prompts once I get into Harrisonburg, but usually I, I leave it on. You know, there is that calm voice. Um, one time in the past few months, I was get, as I was getting closer to the seminary, the GPS app told me to turn right at an intersection that I had always gone straight through. Yeah, you know, sometimes it would be nice to have a conversation with the app, you know. If it, it wouldn't it be great to say, well, why are you asking me to turn right when this is not what we've done before? Uh, and I know going straight ahead will take me to my destination. And and I think I did tell the voice, no, no, I'm I'm not going to do that. It's wrong. And and. There was silence as I drove through the intersection, but I didn't go very far until the voice tried to get me to turn around. I ignored the voice, and, and at the next intersection, it once again tried to get me to turn right. And once again, I had this little talk with it uh, to no avail. But not far from there, I encountered one of those temporary roadside construction signs. And this sign said, Road Closed Ahead. And I could see far enough ahead to, to recognize there was some utility work going on. At that point, I was kind of glad that the GPS app wasn't more interactive in its conversations because the voice would have been within its rights to say, I told you to turn before we got here. GPS, Global Positioning System. It is an incredible technology, a technology that we often take for granted these days. Um, it, it works off of a network of satellites, and, and even with our consumer apps that we find on our smartphones, it's accurate to within about 15 to 20 feet. And so it can even pinpoint what room you're standing in in your house. It became fully functional in 1993. But long before that, Long, long before 1993, we've had another GPS around. In fact, it's existed since the dawn of time. I like to call it God's positioning system. It was God's positioning system that Paul and his entourage were, were using on this second missionary trip of his. Uh, when Paul and his traveling companions uh, uh, complete the circuit back to Jerusalem, they will have traveled a little over 3,000 miles. And it was a trip with turn-by-turn -turn instructions 
from God's positioning system. Now in our text today from Acts, we see that the Spirit has prevented uh, Paul's group from entering Asia and Bithynia. I, I have to wonder what that was like. I wonder what transpired, what happened, how was it revealed to Paul in his group that they should not enter these areas? Was it a voice like the lady's voice from my own GPS app? Was it a feeling that Paul had? Paul somehow have a feeling that he knew they should not enter these areas. Maybe there was some discussion that took place between Paul and his traveling companions. Maybe it was some sort of a group discussion that led to the discernment that the Spirit did not want them to go to these places. Could it have been a combination of all these things? Or were there other visions that occurred before this vision that Paul had of a man in Macedonia? That was certainly a very defining moment for Paul and his group of missionaries because we're told that they got ready to leave at once. At once. Immediately. These folks in Macedonia that will soon be visited by Paul and frankly us today who have Paul in the scriptures that we can read, we should all be thankful that Paul did not argue with his GPS app the way I did on my way to seminary that day, that the app tried its best to allow me to avoid a blocked path. You know, we often say that our lives are a journey, uh, and I embrace that description. But if it's a journey, then the question becomes, where are we getting our direction from? Where are we getting those instructions of where to go? Are we listening for a voice? Are we always working it out by ourselves? How do we know when to go straight or when to make that right-hand turn that we hadn't counted on? Maybe the voice can come in those times that uh, you may have been reading Scripture in the Bible and something just jumped out at you like it had never done before. Or maybe you overheard someone just randomly suggesting that there was a need for something, fill in the blank. And hearing that sparked something in you. Could that be God's positioning system speaking to you? Paul reacted to a vision, a dream. Uh, uh, today in our modern technology world, we like to discount our dreams and laugh about them and talk about how they keep us awake. But it, could it be that God's positioning system is speaking to you in a dream? During the pandemic, God's positioning system has sent us places where sometimes we didn't want to go. It has sent us to wearing masks and worship. There was a time when it sent us to no in-person worship at all. Why would God do that? Is there something that God wants us to find in that experience. As we gather today and worship, whether it is virtual as now or whether it will be in person uh, when the next time I'm here 
uh, the folks of Mount Olivet will be gathered in the pews worshiping. There's two different ways that we can respond uh, when we arrive at that intersection of straight ahead or go to the right or what do we think of mask and worship? What are our feelings of vaccines? When we arrive at that intersection, we can either lament and ignore the GPS voice, or we can choose to rejoice. Rejoice in what we have arrived to. We have much to rejoice in the cooperative parish. No one in the parish has died from COVID-19. We can rejoice that we are able to worship. And yes, I know it looks different. If I had turned right at that intersection, I would have seen roads that I hadn't seen before. What did I miss? We can rejoice that we're able to once again have our small meetings, uh, like our uh, Sunday school classes. We can rejoice, or we can sit at the intersection ignore the voice, and be brought to a standstill because the route we preferred was not God's route for us. You know, today we are just a couple weeks shy of the 250th anniversary of Francis Asbury following God's positioning system in his life. You recall Francis Asbury was the, the first bishop of the Methodist Episcopal Church uh, in America. And he came to a place in his life of choosing whether to make that right-hand turn when his instincts may have been to continue straight. So I want to share with you a couple of entries in his journal from 1771. If you recall from the message, Means of Grace, that was the year that Reverend John Wesley sent Francis Asbury here to the colonies uh, to be a traveling preacher here for Methodism. On the day that Asbury's uh, ship set sail for the colonies, he writes this. On Wednesday, September 4th, we set sail from a port near Bristol, and having a good wind, soon passed the channel. For three days, I was very ill with a seasickness, and no sickness I ever knew was equal to it. Thursday, the 12th. I will set down a few things that lie on my mind. Whither am I going? To the new world. What to do? To gain honor? No. If I know my own heart, no. To get money? No. I am going to live to God and to bring others so to do. The people God owns in England are the Methodists. The doctrines they preach and the discipline they enforce are, I believe, the purest of any people now in the world. The Lord has greatly blessed these doctrines and this discipline in the three kingdoms. They must therefore be pleasing to him. If God does not acknowledge me in America, I will soon return to England. I know my views are upright now. May they never be otherwise. Asbury landed at Philadelphia about six weeks later on October the 27th, 1771, and the rest is a rich history 
of his faithful following of God's positioning system as he ministered to the colonists and then later the new Americans of the new country. So how do you hear that voice of God's positioning system? How do you hear that voice in your life? Francis Asbury heard it in the convictions of his heart and soul. If you attended one of his holy club meetings, he would give you an opportunity to say how it is with your soul today. I think God's positioning system shows us that we can resist change we can refuse change, or we can listen for the directions of God's positioning system and faithfully call, follow God's call on us. How is it that we can faithfully follow God's call? It's because knowing and believing that God knows what is best for us and for all of God's children. When you come to an intersection, spend the time to listen and follow the path where you feel that you are led by God. And to God be the glory Amen. So our time of worship draws to a close. Our time of discipleship begins. Our time of listening for God's voice. Our time of going forth as God's positioning system would call us. Hear these words of benediction. Eternal God, show us the way. Give us the directions. And let us be your servants in this world. Amen. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to in peace.